Hi, this is Everett from Everett's Watercolors. Welcome to my classroom. Uh, today I'm going to go over one of the typical questions I have uh, that I give for some of my students on how to control water in your watercolor paintings. So let's go to my painting table and let me show you and explain to you what I'm talking about. Uh, controlling water on watercolor is probably one of the Oh, the, one of the basic questions I get from a lot of people uh, taking my classes and some of my workshops. Uh, the, most, the most problem mistakes people, uh, artists have, is uh, putting too much water in their painting or on their, on their palette, and then you get, a, you get to be a watery mess or, or a light, or light color on your painting. Also, it can happen the other way. You put too much paint on the paper or in the palette, and then it gives you real large dark marks. The question you should really ask yourself is, where is the water? Is the water in the, uh, on the palette? Is the water on, in the brush? Or is the water on the paper? I'm gonna show you four di different ways to control water so we can better explain uh, how you can control water in your watercolor. The first technique is uh, really wet on wet. Now we'll take a spray bottle here with water and uh, we can wet the brush, we can wet the paper, just spray the water on there. I can also add it with a paintbrush or with a sponge. And I have a, a set up here of three quarter inch paper along with my palette. And I have uh, two buckets of water, one for rinsing and one for adding paints and a sponge over here to wipe off. So I, I mix up a little bit of uh, cobalt blue paint in my brush. As I go into the wet area, you can see the color starting to spread and it starts to move around. And I can add more, more water to that by spraying a little bit more. And the more water, of course, it light. The more water you add to the paint, of course, it lightens it up. But also, you get that flow. Uh, and the other part of a wet and wet is the fact you get soft edges. And the more water you put on it, the more it's going to flow. Now, if I took another color. Let's take this uh, small round brush here and I put in a little bit of, uh, let's say, uh, hooker's green on top of that cobalt. And if I go in there with another color, what happens right away is it, it's the colors start to mix with a wet on wet. The wet on wet techniques it gives you a, a mixture of those colors and also gives you a soft edge, a soft edge. Now that's nice for a background or for, uh, say, a landscape way back in the distance, uh, mountains or skies or whatever. Okay, so those techniques work, but to control the water, you can see the water still flowing back and forth on that water. It's really wet. And this gives you some interesting techniques if that's what you're looking for. It could be a background to a, a still life, you know, behind, a, you could have a, a bunch of flowers with a little bit of still life and a, an interesting background. Uh, the next is, uh, the next technique I want to talk about is dry on dry. Now here you still, you load the brush up with paint, but you dry the you just take the extra water, uh, water out of the brush with a towel or a sponge, and you have dry paper. So I have dry on top of dry, and I get a broken, I get a straight edge, it's hard edges, but also get a broken uh, interrupted stroke. And that's okay for texture on a building or wood uh, or tree trunks or even uh, on roadways. That makes a nice, interesting uh, approach that way. Uh, the, the next technique I want to show is uh, wet on dry. Uh, so what I mean by that is you, you load the brush up with paint and you come, I have now the paper, now the, the brush is wet with uh, water, so the water is in the brush, but I have dry paper. So this way when I, when I put the stroke down, I get that classical paint, paint stroke, but I get the hard edge. Now, this is okay for architectural subjects such as buildings or bridges so forth even uh, for tree trunks but you're going to get a hard edge now we can talk about dry on wet let's go back and turn this around i will use the wet area because we know it's still wet it's still you can still see the shine it's still a wet the paint's still moving around so if i pick up a color uh, let's wash the brush out let's pick up some more of that cobalt blue now, if I go back into this paint as part of the wet, I can still, you now, dry on wet means, okay, I still load the brush with paint, but I dry out, I take the extra moisture out of the brush, and I can go back in on top of that paint, and I can draw, I can 
dry out the brush, take out the extra weight, I can go back in and I, I can draw an object or a shape back there on top of that wet paper because I've got more, I got the moisture taken out of the brush now and I can also use that technique by taking all the water, I, make a, I can squeeze the water out of that and I can actually lift the color or lighten the color from an area by lifting with a dry brush. So a dry brush on top of a wet area. That's dry on wet. So the four, the four things we talked about was uh, number one, the wet on wet, which makes you soft edges. We talked about the uh, dry on dry, which will give you a broken stroke or rough texture. And then the, the third one was the uh, the wet on dry, which is the, the, the wet brush with paint on top of a dry paper will give you hard edges. And then of course the last technique I talked about was putting a, a dry brush, which you take the water out of the brush, pressing it out, and you, you paint on top of a wet area uh, for a dry on wet technique. And also you can lift, you can lift color off with a dry brush. Okay? There's more control here over a wet on wet on this particular technique. Okay, that was basically a cover. Uh, some basic questions I've had in a lot of my workshops is how to control water. And I think those techniques, you practice those, I think those will help you out in controlling water in your watercolors. Now, this is where I'm going to handle a lot of uh, typical questions I've had over the years. And uh, I'd like to have you make comments in this video. Uh, what you think about uh, the comments I've made, uh, any additional questions you have about today's subject, or any future subjects. I'd like to Find out how you think about them. So give me some ideas of what you'd like to see and some questions you may have about watercolor techniques or watercolor uh, problems that you've had. So we're going to share this. We're going to learn together, and uh, I can show you how I do it. Appreciate you watching, and see you next time.